Hey everybody, welcome back to your Linux tutorial series. My name is Caleb. In this video, we're going to start by learning a little bit more on working with files, how to move them and copy them, and then how to actually create these files with a text editor in the terminal. So it should be a pretty good video if uh, you've been following along and you got the basics down and now you need to learn how to create files and actually be able to type them out in junk. So before we get started though, I'm all hyper. I just went on a run. I don't know why I decided to go on a run right now, but this video was actually brought to you by Hostinger, who kindly provided a virtual private server for me to use. So check out Hostinger if you want to easily follow along with these videos. You can get started with a virtual private server for a very affordable amount. So I'll leave a link below, check them out. So where we're at right now is if we list the files in this directory, we have this test one. So I first wanna talk about how to move this file, how to change the name of this file, and how to copy this file. So to move this file, first we need a place to move it to. So let's go ahead and make a directory. I don't know, we'll just call it stuff. To move a file, we use the command mv and then the name of the file. Now this is gonna take two arguments here. So the first is the file and then the destination. So we'll just say stuff. And because we're in a directory that stuff is inside, we don't have to start at the root we can just type stuff out here. So hit enter. Now when we list our files, we just have this folder stuff. And if we want to peek inside of that, we can say ls stuff. And we can see it has test one inside. So let's go ahead and change directory to stuff. Now I wanna talk about how we can rename a file. So we have test one. To rename it, we're actually going to use the same command move, but in the destination, we can define the name. So we're going to move it from where it's currently at to the current directory. So it's gonna stay where it's at. And we're going to call it testing. My bad, I was talking too much. I forgot to put the original file. So test one. So that is the source file. And this is the destination which just happens to be in the same directory. So really we're moving the file from the current directory to the current directory with a new name, but this is a great way just to rename a file. So now when we type ls, we have testing. Fantastic. Now just a little side note, you can see we got this thing here saying that if you need help, you can say mv hyphen hyphen help. So just to show you that, there's always some help if you need um, yeah, and if it looks like this, sometimes you just need to scroll out to get everything to look really nice. But because I'm doing these video presentations, I'm gonna scroll back in and I'm just gonna go ahead and clear the screen. Another good option is man, which is the manual. So if you type out man, you have to say what you want the manual for. So just type in a command. So for example, man MV, and that'll give us the manual for move. And you can see here we have the source and the destination. So you can go through this and see all the different flags you can use to change how it works. This is nice to have because oftentimes when you want to figure out, you know, what does hyphen V mean, for example, you will try to Google that, but Google doesn't at the time of this recording pick up these flags because they're only one character long and I think Google just ignores them. So for example, if I type MV hyphen V flag and then something like Linux, well, it doesn't really come up with what I'm looking for. It has ones with like hyphen T. So I don't know, just the searching on Google with these flags are a little not very good. So that's why I recommend using the man inside of the terminal. So to get out of this, you can just hit Q. Next up, copy, which works in a very similar way. So we can say CP and I forget the name, so I can just type tab and it'll pop up. And we'll copy this to testing2. All right, so now when we list our files, we have testing and testing2. This next thing is actually important to know when you're typing out a command. And in the previous exam example, I typed tab and it popped up. Well, in this situation, there's two files. So you get a little ding if you, if you guys listen closely here. Turn my volume all the way up. Oops, space, tab, and you get a little ding. So now the reason this is happening, although this command will work as is, it's basically telling us, hey, there are some more options beyond just testing. 
So what it's going to do is it's going to fill out the command as best as possible, but you might need to do a little extra work. So if you want to see what these options are now, you can hit tab again, and you'll see it lists all of the things that match this uh, testing so far. So we have testing and testing two. So it's not super clear when we just have two files, testing and testing two. So what I want to do is show you a better mm -hmm. example. If we said touch testing three, and we'll say touch test, and then maybe just another one. I think you can put two in one line here, such as TE. All right, so we just created a bunch of files. Let's clear the screen and type LS. So here are all of our files. So when we say something like CP, T, hit tab, it's going to fill it out the best that it knows, and the farthest it can go is to TE, because that, in theory, could be the file we're looking for. If you wanted to see another option, then hit tab twice, and it'll list them out. These are all of the things that match so far. So let's say I want to do test. Well, now, when I hit tab twice, TE is no longer available as an option, because it doesn't match what we have so far. So this will keep working up until we get to testing, and then we basically have a decision. Do we want testing, testing two, or testing three? So again, you can list them out, and we'll just go with testing three. And you guys get the point at this point. So we'll just call it testing other. <laughs> all right, so now, here are all of our files. Okay, so that is just some basics on working with files, copying them, renaming them, all that junk. So now I wanna talk about how do you actually edit these files? Well, we talked about how to echo content into those files in the previous episode, but that's not really helpful for what we're trying to do because we wanna be able to type out like a text editor, you know, if we wanted to write a bash script or a Python script or just build out some kind of project, then we might need a little bit more control. Now. There's tons of different text editors out there. I'm going to choose to use Vim or VI even. So if you type Vim, it works. So I think I'll go with Vim. I wasn't sure if I would need to install it or not, but it looks like it's included. So to get out of this, you type colon Q and then enter. And what we can do is we can create a file. So we can say Vim my file, hit enter, and this will open Vim. Now to work in Vim, it's kind of a pain if you're new. So you'll start typing and nothing really happens at first. So you actually need to go into editing mode to start typing. And this is one of those things if you don't know how to do it and you accidentally open Vim and then you can't get out of it and it's a huge pain in the butt. So what we'll do is we'll hit I to go into insert mode and now we should be able to type. And just like a normal text editor, we can go down to a new line and it works great. So this is just gonna work as a normal text editor, but when you're ready to stop editing, you can hit escape, and now it goes back to not allowing you to type. From here, if you want to save and exit, you hit colon, WQ for write quit, and that's going to save the file. So now when we list our files, we have my file, and we can see the content of that file using less, which we talked about in the previous episode. So my file, and there's our file. Another option is to use cat. So cat my file, and in that situation, it's just gonna show you inline in the editor, which can be nice. So to open that back up, we'll just say vim my file. So let's just go over some other basic things you can do. Well, first off, you can scroll up and down with the arrow keys. This is going to be probably most natural to everyone using Vim watching this video. However, to the Vim experts, this is for some reason just considered unacceptable. <laughs> you can alternatively move with H, L, J, and K. Here is a really good Vim cheat sheet. So literally there's a command to do everything. And you know, this is a skill that people develop to where they can just jump wherever they want in Vim and edit at a very quick pace. So just as an example, there is different commands to move. So if we look through here under cursor movement, here are all of the proper ways to move. So one of the useful things here is to jump to the end of a line. So you can do that with the dollar sign and you can also use zero to jump to the start of the line. 
So back in Vim, we can say dollar sign to go to the end or zero to go to the beginning. You can also copy paste. So YY to copy or yank and then P to paste, which will repeat that line, which is extremely cool. You can also delete with DD. So that'll clear that up, but that's gonna delete from the bottom as you guys can see there. And overall, there's a lot of different options. I wasn't really intending on giving a full Vim tutorial, so I just wanted to give you an introduction on how to open it, how to do some basic edits. If you want to know all the juicy details on the basics of working with Vim, check out my beginner C programming series on my channel I created a few years ago, but all still entirely relevant. To quit, you can write WQ, or if you don't want to write, you can just say Q, and then put an exclamation mark, and it'll get out of that file. And now when we take a look at this file, cat my file, you can see it kept it as it originally was. Thank you for watching this video. In the next episode, we're going to talk about working with different software, which this is going to be very handy if you start writing code in Linux. You'll probably want some kind of editor. So stay tuned for that video. We'll also talk about how to install stuff. So it's going to be really nice. See you then. And don't forget to check out the subscribe button. Oh, you thought I was going to say our sponsor. No. Subscribe. But also check out our sponsor.